And next we have what the Blue Cat Audio uh, para. How do you pronounce that? It's Is it parametric U? Parametric U. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So I'm just gonna delete this track. Go up to one of these days. I really hope we actually get some hardware up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Hardware, schmardware. Okay, this is the parametric, uh, parametric Q um, three. This is the, the new version. Um, Didn't we already cover this? We looked at the parametric Q, uh, parametric Q two, but this has some new stuff. And actually, oh, you're gonna love this, Brad. This is so much rehashing. <laughs> you're gonna love this. <laughs> it's oh god. The, can we hold on a second? The display is not letting us see the bottom, which is like the most important part. What does it say? Fuck you, Britain. <laughs> <laughs> it, ha- it has a no- it has a non-linear control. A non-linear. Maybe if I hide this thing, the start menu. All right. So here we see the new parametric Q. Um, yeah, we did we did look at the parametric Q two. This is the parametric Q three. It has some some new stuff. Um, if you're saying it's the non-linear thing, and that's the only new thing. Well, also also. Um, with a lot of EQs, like these have the the bands are all bypassable, um, like like a lot of EQs. But uh, when you if you have like a big like bump in one region, um, and then you know you unbypass it, pass it or you or you bypass it, you can get like a click. Hmm. This sort of eases you into it. So let's let's just sort of check out how it does that. Or we'll just listen to the snare and turn. So you hear that? If I hit, if I bypass the band, we're not going to hear any click. Cool. So it's good for your speakers in that respect. That's true. Um, the other thing is it adds window opacity, so nice. you can kind of see through it. It's kind of slick. Most yeah. of the Blue Cat plugins do that now, or all the new ones will. Um, but the main thing for me is uh, this non-linear, n- non-linear setting. Um, where if you if you start turning it up, you get a certain percentage of just strangeness. So if we turn this on, and what I'm going to do is, is is bump up around I don't know what do you say 300 for, to this snare, mm-hmm. and we're doing it soloed. We should probably do it in the mix. That's starting to sound bad, and we want to widen that cue out a little bit maybe. And so right now what it's what it's doing if we turn this non-linearity up it's doing some sort of compression to it Mm -hmm. i'm not sure if you can hear that but we could also turn it to distortion and if i start adding a lot of this you'll hear that really move it up a little bit higher in the frequency spectrum there's also a, a zoom in for like you can go up to 40 db on this which is kind of ridiculous that is ridiculous but you could also like zoom in the window so you can get real precise. Nice. Like if you just want exactly 5 dB, you know. But yeah, this, this comp distortion I think sounds really good when boosting the low end. But let's see what happens when we boost high end. So I'm going to go up here to band 5. I think it starts to sound a little brittle when you're adding high end with that... that uh, non-linear thing going. It sounds like a saltine cracker. Yeah, see what see what it's doing? This is just the, the high boost. I'm going to just widen the bandwidth a little bit to be fair to it, because when you boost, you usually want to use a higher bandwidth. When you cut, lower bandwidth generally Q rule. But yeah, wh- what I'm going to do is change this to the compression, and see how that cl- cleans up a little bit, and actually also turn down the non-linear percentage a little bit. And so that's no high boost. This is with the high boost. It's it's a, it's much. I'm, I'm doing this a lot more than I probably should just to, right. to show you guys. Um, but you, you're you're actually showing it's ma- like major a major flaw with plug-in EQs, and it's that the highs are extremely extremely brittle. Yeah. One thing that we can do though is oversample. Did you hear that change? Yeah. And and the oversampling is what you want to do when you're doing a lot of high up, like upper frequency boosting so what i'm going to do is boost this high and it's op- oversampled so it's going to be a smoother high end boost as you can probably hear it's more than you than i would choose to do but and now i'm going to turn off oversampling yeah you can hear a big difference yeah. right it does smooth it out a bit it's still i mean like it's a, it's it's just the problem with any plug-in eq though exactly i mean this is not gonna 
give you the sound of like a real nice passive EQ. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's probably not even going to get you the sound of a super high end plugin. Um, mm -hmm. And what's the price difference? I believe this is this is under a hundred bucks for, yeah. on its own. Yeah, I mean it's a good for a budget studio. This is a great solution. It's got I got it's got tons of options. It's mm -hmm. it's not really a bad sounding EQ, but like I said, we or like both of us have said, uh, you really just got got to choose carefully what you do with these EQs. Um, and that's with uh, that's with hardware and software. That's with everything. It's a it's sometimes a little more hyped in software. Uh, yeah, and compression. You can, you can apply it to pretty much any DSP uh, or just signal processing in general. Too much is usually too much, unless yeah. you're doing something where you're looking for that. Well, yeah, well, you know, there's there's times where you do need to compress the living god out of something. You know what I mean? Just flatten the hell out of it just to get like a certain, you know, sound. But I mean, that's that's more of a mixing philosophy of like w again going back to the beginning point of what are you going for as far as the sound and how you record it you know accordingly and then you process it accordingly mm -hmm. so i mean that's just some other stuff well overall i think this is a a real nice eq um there are two other versions we have them but we're not gonna look at them right now there'll be videos up and, and make sure you, you check those out i'm gonna do screencasts of them nice uh, but there's also the um the stereo eq which has two bands that you can either link th th this is the the mono version but you can use it over a stereo signal like we did today um but there's a stereo one where you could treat either channel separately, and there's also the widening, which is an MS um, mm -hmm. matrix, so you can treat the center center uh, channel against. Is the it a, a, a MS matrix imaging system? No. Well, what, all it does is, is there's two. Ch it's it has two channels, just like the like left right. Instead of left right, it's center and sides or mid sides. Mid sides. So so, it's, it's so you can EQ the the sides separate from the center channel, and it, it's it's probably more of a mastering tool. Well, this is my question about that, though. Is it is it an emulation of MS Matrix? How do you mean? Like you're saying that it has like an imaging, like you know, instead of stereo, like it has MS. Is it that? Is it that you have to record an MS first? No, no, no. You it, you can treat any stereo signal um, that that you want, but but you could also treat a matrixed MS uh, signal. I think you would need a decoder, though. Man, that's I don't know about that, man. <laughs> Well, I don't know, boss. I, I think I think you're I think you're taking you're you're taking it out of context. Like, um, you, you're you're talking basically about for for our viewers who may not know, uh, having a matrix like two channel thing where where mid the mid the mid is on one channel and the side is on another, and you can you can bring in more of the sides. To, to, it's it's a stereo micing technique. If you bring in more of the sides, right. it brings in more of the room. Or you could turn very up, useful for room recording. 